Now, uh, Dr. Gina Rollins and Dr. Richard Warshak abused and rejected the link between intimate partner violence and parental alienation. Good morning, everyone. I'm yep. Dr. Jenna Rollins from Barry University School of Social Work in Miami Shores, Florida. I really wish that I could have been there in person. However, unfortunately, due to circumstances out of my control, it just was not possible. Nonetheless, I am thrilled just the same for this opportunity to present a study recently published in the Journal of Partner Abuse, Abused and Rejected, The Link Between Intimate Partner Violence and Parental Alienation. The article, originally published in January of 2023, was co-authored with Dr. Richard Warshak and Dr. Jennifer Harmon, two recognized experts in the field. And honestly, I'm not sure the study would even be published by now without their significant contributions and guidance. Before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to say thank you to the Parental Alienation Study Group and to all those in attendance today here and virtually at this fifth international conference and to all those who have worked so hard tirelessly to put this event together. I am forever inspired by everyone's work and dedication to this life altering form of abuse and betrayal trauma. I also want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to the study participants. It is never lost on me as a researcher and clinician that study participation often requires people to relive some of their most painful and often unresolved memories, the experience of which can be re-traumatizing. I am humbly indebted to each of them and motivated by their strength and resolve. It goes without saying the study and today's presentation would not be possible without their contributions. Okay, let's get started. The presentation is going to begin with a brief background, then study purpose, our hypotheses and questions, methodology, study results, limitations, future research possibilities, and then some final thoughts. So the basic assumptions which really inform the background for this study are quite simple. For parental alienation, we agree that this includes an unreasonable rejection of a parental figure, unreasonable not including estrangement. We agree this usually occurs under the influence of an aligned parent, and we agree there are distinct manifestations exhibited by alienated children, for example, a campaign of denigration, presence of borrowed scenarios, etc. For intimate partner violence, we agreed there are various typologies to classify different patterns of abuse and that unilaterally perpetrated coercively controlling intimate partner violence is marked by a need for power and control, can create an environment conducive to trauma bonding, and parents perpetrating this form of abuse can undermine their child's relationship with the other parent. For both intimate partner violence and parental alienation, parent-child relationships are impacted, which include relationships with parents who are perpetrators and parents who are victims. For both forms of abuse, there are also missed, delayed, and sometimes even rejected opportunities for intimate partner violence and parental alienation informed interventions, which can at best not address what is happening and at worst exacerbate what is happening, especially when those interventions are not specifically informed. Previous studies have demonstrated a connection between intimate partner violence and a child's alienation from the abused parent, but little is known about the relationships between the type of intimate partner violence, aspects, and severity of a child's alienation, and the target parent's gender. The overarching purpose of this study was to increase our understanding of the relationship between intimate partner violence and parental alienation. We believe this improved understanding may increase identification, may encourage earlier and more informed interventions, and ultimately may lead to better outcomes for children and families. Our study goals included assessing the incidence of intimate partner violence in a population of parents who identify as victims of parental alienation, determining if a relationship exists between the gender of targeted parents and the experience of intimate partner violence, determining if a relationship exists between the gender of targeted parents and the child's alienated behavior, determining if specific aspects of a child's alienated behavior are associated with verbal and physical intimate partner violence, and determining if a child's alienated behavior is experienced as more severe 
for parents who identify as victims of intimate partner violence. For this study, we hypothesize that more than half of parents who identify as alienated would also report being victims of intimate partner violence. We also hypothesize that a relationship would exist between the gender of targeted parents and the experience of intimate partner violence for targeted parents such that females would be more likely to indicate being a victim of intimate partner violence than males. For the other areas of inquiry, we pose three questions. Number one, is there a link between the gender of the targeted parent and the child's alienated behavior? Number two, are specific aspects of a child's alienated behavior associated with verbal and physical intimate partner violence perpetrated by the alienating parent? And number three, is a child's alienated behavior experienced as more severe for parents who identify as victims of intimate partner violence? Okay, how did we go about testing our hypotheses and answering our questions? This was a survey study approved by Barry University's IRB. A convenience sample was procured from online parental alienation parent support forums. Flyers were posted on the forums with information on how to access the survey, which was administered by SurveyMonkey. SurveyMonkey included a written consent. There were three measurement tools utilized, a background questionnaire, the Rollins Parental Alienation Scale, or RPAS, which measures a child's alienated behavior, and the Hurt, Insult, Threatened Screen Tool, or HITS, which screens for domestic violence. For data analysis, Spearman correlations, Mann Whitney U tests, and a Wilcoxon signed rank test were used to assess relationships and comparisons. The background questionnaire asked basic demographic information for participants, for the child with whom the participant identified as having the most troubled relationship, and for the other parent. Parent-partner relationship history was also asked, for example, marital history, number of years together, etc. Questions were also asked regarding the history of any external findings for parental alienation. For example, has any court-appointed evaluator concluded that your child's rejection of you was not reasonable and was not justified by your behavior? There were also three deal-breaker questions which would eliminate participants from participating in this study depending on their responses. Questions were asked regarding the participant's history of a positive relationship with their child, one of the hallmarks of parental alienation, and also questions regarding any history of physical abuse convictions and or a history of sexual abuse convictions, which would indicate estrangement versus alienation. The Rollins Parental Alienation Scale, originally created in 2015, measures six distinct domains associated with the child's alienated behavior. Five domains were originally posited by Gardner, including campaign of denigration, unconditional reflexive support, presence of borrowed scenarios, spread of animosity, and independent thinker phenomenon. The sixth domain, lack of positive affect, was identified through exploratory and confirmatory factor analysis and subsequently published in 2018 and 2019. The RPAS includes 23 questions. Responses are captured using a Likert scale. The Hertz Insults Threatens Screams tool was originally developed in 1998 at Christ Hospital in Chicago as a screening tool for domestic violence. The HITS measures two domains, physical and verbal abuse. There are four questions total, each of which begins with during the past 12 months, how often did your partner? For purposes of this study, we changed the beginning of the question to include during your relationship with your child's other parent, how often did they? The remainder of the question remained the same. Physically hurt you, insult you or talk down to you, threaten you with physical harm, scream or curse at you. Responses are captured using a Likert scale. Scores of greater than 10 for females, greater than 11 for males with female partners, and greater than 12 for males with male partners are considered positive.
This slide highlights the analysis conducted. The tables are also provided at the end of the presentation. I'm not going to go through each for the sake of time. However, very briefly, relationships between the HITS and RPAS were assessed using Spearman correlations. RPAS scores for parents who were identified as victims of IPV were compared to non-victims using Mann-Whitney U-tests. A Wilcoxon signed rank test compared the HITS verbal and physical abuse scores. And the level of statistical significance was sit, set at a p-value of less than 0.01 to account for multiple comparisons and reduce the risk of false positive correlations. Finally, the results. We were thrilled with the response rate. There were 842 eligible participants in this study. Here are just some of the results from the background questionnaire. The parent gender was split literally down the middle. Primary child gender was a little less split evenly with 55% female and almost 45% male. Parental relationship history, approximately 77% had been married and 18% had cohabitated. Only 5% had not ever lived together. Full or majority physical custody had been awarded to the other parent, 53.6%. To the targeted parent, 17.1%. And 50-50 custody, 29.3%. Lastly, in response to the two questions posed about whether or not a court appointed evaluator or a court order had made findings that a child's rejection was not reasonable and not justified by the participant's behavior, approximately 25% reported a court appointed evaluator had made findings and 14% reported a court order had included findings. Okay, now we are up to our hypotheses. Hypotheses one. We hypothesize more than half of parents who identified as alienated would also report being victims of intimate partner violence, and this was confirmed. Approximately 63% identified as victims of intimate partner violence. Now for hypothesis two. We hypothesized a relationship would exist between the gender of targeted parents and the experience of intimate partner violence for targeted parents such that females would be more likely to indicate being a victim of intimate partner violence than males. And this was confirmed. 65% of intimate partner violence victims were female. We also found that the HITS measures were significantly higher for female participants in all areas except screams. Now for our questions. In question one, we asked, is there a link between gender of the targeted parent and the child's alienated behavior? We found female participants experienced their child's alienated behavior significantly higher in all areas, except for lack of positive affect. For question two, we asked, are there specific aspects of a child's alienated behavior associated with verbal and physical intimate partner violence perpetrated by the alienating parent? We found significant relationships between the presence of borrowed scenarios and all four hit scores and overall hit score. We also found significant relationships between a campaign of denigration and all but one of the hit scores. Hertz. We also found that a lack of positive affect toward the alienated parent was negatively related to the hits hurt score. Lastly, we found a significantly higher level of verbal abuse than physical abuse. For question three, we asked, is a child's alienated behavior experienced as more severe for parents who identify as victims of intimate partner violence? We found that parents who identified as victims of intimate partner violence scored significantly higher on a campaign of denigration and on the presence of borrowed scenarios. Another important finding related to our background questionnaire, a significant relationship was found between all RPAS factors and parents who answered yes to either of the questions posed regarding an external finding for unreasonable rejection. 
there was no significant relationship between the hit scores and the questions posed. Now for a few takeaways. More than half of the 842 parents identified as victims of intimate partner violence. The level of verbal abuse was significantly higher than physical abuse. Significant relationships between aspects of a child's alienated behaviors and the type of intimate partner violence were reported. And significant relationships between gender and the experience of intimate partner violence and a child's alienated behaviors were also reported. For victims of intimate partner violence, parental alienation was experienced as more severe and the most severe manifestations were a campaign of denigration and presence of borrowed scenarios. And when intimate partner violence took the form of physical violence, victims reported that their alienated children were less likely to withhold positive affection from them. Now for the known limitations. We used a convenient sample of self-identified alienated parents who were presumably more knowledgeable about parental alienation than the general population. Were their responses based on actual experiences or tailored to fit their understanding of parental alienation criteria? We simply do not know. We adjusted the HITS tool to reflect abusive behaviors when the parents were in a relationship with the other parent rather than in the past 12 months. How this modification impacted the results, we also do not know. We did not collect partner gender data, which is used to determine the cutoff scores for the HITS. In all, there were 45 of the 256 identified male victims who scored exactly a 12, which means these 45 could have been misclassified. Lastly, there was an assumption that higher RPAS scores are indicative of more severe parental alienation based on validation studies of the RPAS, wherein RPAS scores were higher for cases where a court evaluator or court judgment had confirmed the presence of parental alienation. It was assumed parental alienation was more severe when a court evaluator or court judgment had confirmed the presence of parental alienation. Future research will hopefully continue to clarify the relationship between intimate partner violence and parental alienation, clarify differences between families impacted by parental alienation with and without a history of intimate partner violence, explore differences in outcomes for alienated children with and without a family history of intimate partner violence, explore differences in outcomes for the relationships between alienated children and alienated parents with a family history of intimate partner violence, and also explore intimate partner violence and parental alienation hybrid informed interventions. Interventions to include clinical interventions, um, custodial um, interventions, legal interventions, etc. Just a few final thoughts. Intimate partner violence and parental alienation are both such incredibly destructive, complex forms of abuse and betrayal trauma. Given the link between factors associated with intimate partner violence and parental alienation, professionals should consider both possibilities when either problem is alleged. This consideration may promote earlier identification, more meaningful interventions, and ultimately, may improve outcomes for children and families. Thank you so much for your time and attention this morning. I again regret that I'm not able to be there in person. I sincerely hope that I have the opportunity to be with you at some point in the future. In the meantime, if you have any questions or you would like to contact me for any reason, my contact information is here and I'm also making my PowerPoint available, which includes all of the um, tables and analysis. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.